Now, this was a while ago, and then my kids were like, Dad, how's the podcast or whatever? They were asking me about it, and they're like, we're going to start our own podcast. And Cohen, my five-year-old, goes, it's going to be about animals and dinosaurs. We're going to call it furry creatures. <laughs> Yo, come on, Sawyer and Coco. Let's go. To the top, baby. Might have to pitch their podcast to you guys here soon. Furry creatures with the five and seven-year-old. Dude, the Henry boys just do chips off the old block. So uh, today we have a podcast about the same story that seems to fit into our wheelhouse all the time. This history of North America that continues to be covered up, both literally and scientifically. Megaliths, like I remember talking to Tony, he said he was finding megalithic ruins in Pennsylvania. Joe Taylor talked about megaliths in Montana. Yeah. We talked about giants in uh, Arizona. We talked about a, a crazy Mayan battle with giants in Arkansas. We talked about the Lovelock case. Talked a little bit in platitudes um, about Catalina Island and the stuff that's that's off the uh, off the coast, coast there. Cal. Yeah, yeah. And we've talked about the mounds with Fritz. That these things were all over the the Ohio Valley, up into Michigan, down Cop- in Tennessee. copper mines, copper mines in the Great Lakes. Yeah. So this story kind of fits right into all the things we've been talking, that there was a megalithic wall built in Rockwall, Texas. The irony, the irony is thick there, Nathan. There's a rock wall in Rockwall. Who would have thought Yeah, that? right? I mean, some people think it's so simple that it, sh- that it can't be true. I think we made a pretty dang good case that giants were building these things all over America, right in our backyard, Luke. And, of course... Bring in the old scientific team, and what do they say? Oh, these are natural formations. This isn't what you think it is. These are igneous occurrences. These are not the rock walls you were looking for. Mm, indeed, they're not. And so these guys, the farmers were digging down wells, and they kept running into this wall. And one of the things about Texas is a lot of this stuff is private land, so they can't, you know, you can't dig up these things in private land. But, but what do you know? Some of these walls are 40 foot tall in some sections, and they're all covered in mud. It's interesting, yeah, the... There's also a lot of right angles too when you when you look at the aerial view of what they've actually discovered. It mm-hmm. just it seems a stretch to think that this is naturally occurring, especially when you pull up pictures and we can put some of this stuff on the Facebook page and we release this. But there's it's it's tough. It looks a lot like like rudimentary like brick and and mortar like clay yeah. brick. And and I know that that there are places on Earth where we do see stuff that naturally occurs that looks somewhat like this. But it's just it's it's interesting how easily people will dismiss this, and also who on that side dismisses it. It starts to see this pattern. I think that we've mm. we've talked about on the show of, of the usual suspects. They're saying these are these are clastic sand dikes, igneous occurrences, yeah. and yet you have other people on the other side. They're saying there's no way. You've archaeologists saying that these are absolutely man-made. You've got people that, and we're going to get into some of the articles and stuff, and some of the the, the actual you know, evidence that we were able to find. But there's stuff, two-ton rocks that are pulled up out of the, out of the ground and digging wells that have pictographs and engraving stuff on them. What doesn't make sense? Iron rings, right? Stuff doesn't really make like, a lot of sense for what what we would we're being told is a, is a natural occurrence. Yeah. You, know, you know what makes me think about Nate, actually, is I don't know if you ever watched the stuff about the stone structures off the coast of Japan. Have you ever seen any of that stuff, the underwater stuff about? Yeah. And how most of the stuff you that you watch on you know on normal TV, whether it be Discovery Channel or whoever's broadcasting that, right? They talk about how you know, all these right angles and stuff are naturally occurring in shale. And a lot of it seems a, a, a little bit like you're... The stretch is to stretch and say that it's somehow this occurred naturally and, and not that it was... You know, man-made or, mm-hmm. or sort of created, right? So yeah, I, I think this is this is a fascinating story. Yeah, into, you, know? you gotta ask yourself just simple questions of like, okay, if all these guys were digging down and hitting a rock wall, that's that's why they named the place that. I don't know. I think people were real simple. They named the towns after the phenomenons, the areas, the geological formations. And Luke, one other thing I was gonna say before he hopped on is Derek kind of talked about how places like Lovelock might have been a lake at one point, right? Right. Well, we know it was a prehistoric lake, so there was the sure. topography was much different, right? So, if you look at the map on Rock Wall, there's all this water right around this area, right? There's a lake, so there. yeah, yeah. So you wonder if there was like a fortified city that they built. We know the giants were sailing around the world, right? This could have been a an ancient port. Well, or just a lake a lakeside city. I mean, you have. A, I mean, I think it may be less complicated. Just you, you have sure. a wa- you have a water source, and you've got a place. And we know that there were. It was a t- not a time of peace, right? You had these different tribes that were warring, whether it be you know coming up from mm-hmm. Mexico and Central America. You know, the Native Americans. We talk about yellow hair and all the things that happened. They warred with these 
red haired and yellow haired giants that are buried in the in the mound builders. So, you know, we're not we're not talking about a time of, you know, of utopia and peace here. So yeah. I think it's interesting that we that you can surmise that there was possibly an ancient walled city here. Especially I think more more so than the ports or ships or anything like that, just that there's a wa- there's a there's a water source we know is there. Yeah. And 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 has been there for a long time. So maybe you've got you know this sort of giant lakeside villa, right? Yeah. <laughs> and there was giants discovered there. So we are going to post a news article that a giant eighteen foot skeleton was dug up there and shown around. There was a paper in Rockwall called the Rockwall Success, and it was the first newspaper. And in eighteen six eighteen eighty six, Luke, I don't know if you know this, they released an article about this giant that was found there. And this guy, Sam Slick, wrote about it. And he wrote three articles, supposedly. And then the paper was bought out. And then all this stuff disappears. But he says, The greatest wonders we have to record this week is the finding of a petrified human skull. While at work at last Saturday, Ben Burton unearthed with his plow a gigantic skull as large as a half bushel. The staring sockets wherein the eyeballs once rolled were as large as a half-gallon cup. Some of the jaw teeth still remained. One of them was about an inch or two by two inches long. This goes to prove that this county was once inhabited by a race of people that would be wonderful to look at now. Dr. Higgins think the skull is some antediluvian giant that would have weighed at least a thousand pounds. Anyone wishing to see this mammoth skull can do so by calling the success office and Mr. Burton says he will leave it there for inspection. Sam Slick. Hey, just want to say thanks for listening to our podcast, sharing it with friends, and just being here week after week, listening to what uh, people have to say, the guests that come on the show, and all the weird, blurry stuff in our world. And we've just had a heck of a time, a heck of a ride. Last year was great, a lot of highs, and you guys were just sending us incredible messages. We've got some really great guests on the show as well. Just really thankful for uh, everyone who's listening to this show and how much it's growing. If you want to help us grow and make more content and get access to shows like this, you can go to blurrycreatures.com slash members and become a member of the show, support the show, and Luke and I can have more time to devote to finding the blurry stories out there and putting them in your ears, editing them down, and give you more content. This is one of many bonus episodes that you get. You also get discounts on merch. You also get uh, members chats. We're going to do one on January 17th. Zoom chat, everyone can come in, talk about their favorite uh, creatures, talk about what's going on in their life, how this all relates to the Bible and their faith, and uh, there's a lot of great things. Also, uh, Facebook chat that's that's been fire lately with great memes, and you guys have been making Luke and I laugh a bunch. So head over to blurrycreatures.com slash members, lots of perks, just about a coffee a month, gets you access and helps you feel good, and gets this show to the next level where we can produce content all the time and just who knows how many shows a week we can get out if we can just sit down and make it happen so blurrycreatures.com slash members once again this one is a members only episode appreciate you guys for supporting the show have a good day